What's up guys, Alex from Hoppos. Uh, I want to show you guys a quick video on how to assemble one of our piston pumps. Uh, so Erica has actually volunteered to do a video for you guys to assemble a complete piston pump using all of our product that is listed on hoppersonline.com. And uh, as he's doing the assembly, I'll go ahead and walk you guys through everything he is doing step by step. So Eric's going to go ahead and get started right now and he'll show you the first step what to do. All right, so you guys can actually start off by uh, making sure all your products there first off. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and start uh, putting on your tank O-rings, your backing plate O-rings, and also all the O-rings for your plunger. Uh, the plunger is your actual piston. So the, the term piston is coming from this piece that Eric's actually working on right now. Um, this right here, what this does is actually works uh, with air and oil. So you're gonna actually have oil on the front side of it and uh, air on the back side of it. And the air is gonna create your actual extra pressure uh, for the piston pump. So the next step on uh, assembly is gonna be making sure that you put your number eight pressure O-ring in. Uh, once that O-ring is in, uh, you're gonna actually get the gear on there, put all your gear bolts. Uh, and on this one, we're actually running a uh, Presto High number 11. Uh, so it's going to be one of our basic piston pumps. Uh, your guys' gears might change from, uh, you know, Marzaki to Presto High to Rockford. So One thing when you are doing this, you want to make sure that your O-ring is in place as you're putting the gear in. Uh, right here, he's bringing the gear to spec pretty much and uh, going to make sure that all the bolts are tight. So he's using the four bolts on the top and we're right now on this pump itself we're actually leaving the two bottom ones in there on some gears uh, depending on your pressure you're running um, sometimes we like to run all six gear or all six bolts on the gear but in this case we're only doing the four for this setup so the next step eric's going to show you right here he's actually uh working on the actual piston going inside the actual o-ring or the tank itself and then also um, getting the tank assembled onto the actual block. One thing you do gotta notice and pay attention is Eric's gonna show you right now. You wanna make sure that the O-ring goes in nice and square. So right here what he's doing, he's gonna show you, he's gonna show you uh, to slightly put it in and you're actually doing it on, on the piston, there's gonna be two different sides of it. There's gonna be a flat side and the open side. Um, if you see, you're gonna see that has a greater indention, so it's a, it's a deeper hole on the actual piston, and the opposite side, which is gonna be closer to the backing plate, is gonna have a shallower recess against it. And the reason for the recess is actually for the gear. You wanna have a little more clearance on the gear when the piston's traveling in and out, or uh, you know, forward or back in the actual tank itself. One thing that's going to be slightly different from a piston pump to a regular pump is your tank fill or your oil fill is going to be in a different position on this. Uh, the position is actually going to go closest to the block. So you're going to see that the tank port itself is actually moving from the backside where it's normally at closer to the backing plate to the actual O-ring or to the actual um, block itself. And the reason for that is there can't be any uh, obstructions in the way uh, when the actual piston is traveling from the back to the front. And also the oil is going to be on the front side of the actual piston itself. So one of the main things that uh, we're actually doing here that uh, you might want to take in consideration when you're doing it is we always pre-lube all the O-rings to make uh, life a lot easier. And that way it does, doesn't chew up the O-rings. You want to try to keep the lifespan as strong as possible on this. So as you see right there, he actually lubed up the o-ring put the o-ring you know on on track exactly where it's supposed to go on the tank itself and then press down firmly so one difference that we actually do on our piston pumps uh, compared to a lot of other people is we actually like to run thicker rods and we do this for safety um because you know it's all fun and games until someone gets gets hurt so what we like to do is make sure that safety is always uh, our number one concern so we actually like running complete rods that go through the backing plate and the block and um we do that so you're making sure that you're getting full thread because aluminum into steel a lot of them um don't grab all the way or you're not you're not really sure exactly how many threads you're getting on there so we like to make sure that you're getting full threads a full nut uh, that way the, the pulling surface on the actual nut and bolt itself is a lot stronger so it's safe, you know, safer in the long run. Um, and also 
you don't have to worry about the tank or the backing plate being blown off. So I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard horror stories before. So uh, that's one reason why we actually run our rods all the way through. And our rods are actually 3 eighths thick too. So And um, we do that again for safety. So yeah, like I said, it's all fun and games, but you got to make sure that everyone stays safe when you're doing this. And uh, this is one reason why uh, we want to do a tutorial video for you guys. So... Um, as you've seen, he put the backing plate on and he's also running all the rods through there. Um, what he's doing right now, as you can see, he's, uh, he's going from left side to right side. He's actually alternating on the threads. And the reason he does that is to get the, uh, the rods even on both sides. We do our rods slightly longer and we do that again for safety. That way you have the option to do a secondary nut on there. Um, or uh, the nuts that we actually use are slightly bigger than your standard nut you'd find in a hardware store. Um, so what he's going to do right here, he's actually holding one side with a standard wrench and the other side is going with the impact and tightening it up uh, opposite corners. The reason we do opposite corners is that way it pulls the o-ring down evenly from the block and the backing plate. You got to remember on this right here, the difference is you're running extra O-rings compared to your standard uh, tank. Your standard tank's going to only have you know your main O-ring on the block, and then on the piston you're going to have one on the block and backing plate if you purchased ours. So what we're doing right here on top now is we're actually just topping off the tank with uh, the actual tank plug itself, and we do that just to you know make sure that everything is here in place, make sure that you have all the correct items for your kit, and uh, just so we finish up the backside. Now he's moving his way up to the front. And as you can see, he just put the key in, and the key is going to go the actual 16 spline onto the actual gear. And then he's actually disassembling the motor right now to get it ready. Uh, a lot of you guys have seen there's actually little square nuts on the motors uh, to hold it in it pretty much intact while shipping and deliver to your door if you order from us. So when you take those off, the motor is going to become uh, actual four different pieces. So you want to make sure it's uh, safe to grab it and you're going to hold it uh, you know, firmly from the top to bottom. Make sure you don't just grab the top cap. So right here, uh, Eric's actually uh, putting on the motor and he's lining up the teeth on the actual uh, ge uh, gear and the key. And uh, he starts the bolts by hand, and then he actually works its way in with the actual impact. And on these, you want to be pretty careful. You don't want to go too tight on these because um, those rods are pretty thin and long, so they will uh, have a tendency to break. And um, right here is going to be a finished product as far as the, the actual piston itself. And then, of course, uh, once you're all done assembly, you want to actually grab a rag, clean off any fingerprints, any residual oil from when you put it on the O-ring. Um, that way you bring the actual tank and um, piston back to its original condition when you uh, received it from us. Um, there is going to be a few things on here that uh, we will point out uh, that we're not showing in the video because everyone's going to do this slightly different. But on our backing plate on our actual piston, there's going to be, um, depending on which one you order, there's going to be a, a gauge port and a pressure port. So this is going to be where you actually charge it. Um, on this piston, you see there's only one. Uh, some of our options that we have, we have it with a dual as well. Um, so some people like running gauges, some people don't. So. The reason we did that, uh, we have two different styles, is for uh, to pretty much give everyone what they like. And um, I'm not going to go into specifics as in what it takes to fill the piston. So I know you, all you guys are probably typing your keyboard right now. Um, we're not going to do that. And the reason we're not doing that is everyone's car reacts different. I build one, Eric builds one, you build one. All of our builds are going to be slightly different. Um, it's all the same concept and everything, but everyone designs their suspension, the geometry of the suspension, uh, the, where they're, the placement of the batteries, the placement of the trailing arms, all that's going to change. And the pressure will actually change as well. So that's the reason why we're not going into that. So the piston pump itself is going to be a higher performance pump, but at the same time, you got to also have the car working and functional before this guy is going to perform at its max. Um, so one thing I do got to say before we finish off this video is while you're working on a piston pump, whether you're pulling it out of the car or uh, actually building it, make sure you're always uh, taking consideration for safety. This will have air pressure in it if you're building it inside of a car. So make sure you do release the air before you work on this. And if you're not familiar with this, we do recommend to have this done professionally by a professional shop. Um, regardless if it's us, another company, or someone else, uh, make sure you guys are taking safety into consideration and you guys are doing this safely and removing pressure in that backside of the piston before anything. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, 
thank Eric right there. Eric's uh, the hand model in this video. Um, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you guys for following. Make sure you guys subscribe on the page to see all the new updates.